Now, I know this is the part of the video where I make a funny joke about the ink or my incompetence, but I realized that as I was filming, my fingers were incredibly red because I've been messing with Aaron's thinking putty. It's this really fun, fired up putty, but it's so dyed, like my fingers are red, and I don't want people to think I have a rash or a comment about it, so I'm just gonna make the joke here. Didn't notice as I was filming the video. Let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up YouTube, I'm Jay Rod of Balbrot Production, and today we're taking a look at the Amsterdam Acrylic Collection Oxidized Black Ink. Now I'm very excited as I always love to test out acrylic inks, they're very smooth, very fun to try, and this one has a few interesting qualities, especially with this brand as a whole, so let's take a look at the bottle in depth. So the Amsterdam Acrylic Ink comes in a nice sturdy glass bottle with an eyedropper, it's number 735, and its title is Oxidized Black, it is one fluid ounce for a whopping $7, which is actually a good deal. On the side we see little illustrations showing what this ink can be useful, which I always appreciate, and if you read this little description over here, it's a little interesting. Acrylic ink, shape well before use. Pretty standard. Highly pigmented and waterproof when dry. Okay. Store frost free. So apparently this ink cannot be stored in cold environments, which is kind of interesting. It even has a little mark right here, and it's also made in Denmark. This company had several different colors of acrylic ink, including a white ink and a gray ink that we will be testing in the future. So let's see if their black ink has what it takes. Let's go ahead and bring out our Batman sketchbook. <laughs> Hey, Editing J-Rod here, and I just realized we don't have a Batman sketchbook anymore. We actually used the last page on that really crappy Copic fine line or fountain pen thing, so yeah, we're just uh, gonna use a normal sketchbook now. Oh, that's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Very smooth. I am noticing some edging here on this paper. Now this is acetone paper so it's not the best for inking. It's just kind of the sketchbook that I had the most available for because our Batman sketchbook's gone. So I think if we do this on Bristol board it won't have this effect. Effect. Either way, I do like how smooth the ink goes down. I do like the feel I'm getting with the actual nib itself. Let's go ahead and give it a quick test with our quill nib. I'm really curious to see how that will work on a smaller nib. And then, of course, our brush test. All right, same thing. It is very smooth. I actually think it's smoother with this nib for some reason, just kind of that finer point. You can really get a lot of good curve, just like a smooth motion. Very nice, of course. Because it is smaller, you're not going to be able to hold as much ink, but still, I do like what we're getting. The ultimate test for me is how is this going to work with an actual brush, because the illustration that I planned in mind is going to be using more brush than it will be using dip pen. Ooh, okay. That's not bad. And it dries quick. I can already see it drying. Now, I don't know if that's because the paper just absorbs more of the ink, so it's drying quicker than what I'm used to, or it's just the property of the ink. But either way, it does feel really nice with a brush. Of course, we won't be able to give it a full test until we actually do our illustration. But just from the test, I feel like it's going to be very smooth. It's going to dry very nice. And it could definitely have some trouble with layering. There's some gray showing just a little bit. So I may have to go over it a few times. It's kind of my prediction right now. But I could be wrong. And I do like the feel of it. It just feels like a very nice ink. Acrylic inks tend to be very smooth. One of my favorite inks of all time is the Acrylic FW by De La Roni. That is the smoothest ink I've used. It's just such a fun ink. Now I do have a technical pen that I could actually fill this ink with, but in all honesty, I, I don't feel like cleaning it, and I kind of prefer using dip pens and quill nibs with actual ink wells, so we're going to skip that test. But overall, I could say that my prediction in terms of what we're going to get out of this ink with our illustration is that it's going to be very smooth, very fun to use with the dip pen. Uh, hopefully that bleeding is again not part of the ink. I don't believe so. I think it's because of the paper we're using here. This is the best paper and I will find a good sketchbook to replace our Batman sketchbook in the future, but not right now. And we'll just have to see how it works with the brush. Probably going to be having to go over an area a few times to get a full 100% black, which you do know I do find that frustrating if I can't get a full 100% black right off the bat. But I'm a little more forgiving about filling an area a couple times. You know, even my favorite inks I have to do that once in a while, so a little forgiving there. But yeah, I'm very excited to today illustration as I penciled it one month ago. It was a pencil that I liked so much I actually moved it up on the production scale. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now actually adjusting the camera settings so you can see the blue line pencils. Today's illustration is of course of Wrath, one of my favorite characters to illustrate on the channel. And this post was actually one that I've been wanting to do for a while. I used a reference for this for the general gorilla-like pose, trying to exaggerate the more gorilla-like aspects of his design, and then focus on the bat aspects of the design, including the wing coming out to the viewer as a hand. Really like how this looks. And again, 
again, I did use a reference. I'm going to put that reference here. I don't know who actually drew that, so I can't give full proper credit, but I do want to mention that, hey, I did get inspiration for this piece and give the credit where I can. Now we're going to illustrate this, of course, only using the Instagram ink. I'll use some whiteout to actually clean up mistakes I make, and we'll be using our brush and dip pens like normal. So now that we've got that challenge set up, let's go ahead and find out if this ink is good or bad. So roll that super time lapse. Now this is normally the part of the video where I say inking this piece was super fun and enjoyable. And don't get me wrong, it was. But I honestly found it to be far more relaxing than it actually was enjoyable. Because this was very relaxing. It was a very fun, awesome experience. Now I tried to film three videos a day on my film days. This was the first one. So I tried to do something as a nice warm up, something that I think would be really fun. And when I try an ink of a new company, I always try to grab the black ink first. As that's the one you're going to use the most, so they tend to put their best foot forward. And this ink was super fun. I've always loved using acrylic inks. I love how how smooth they are and while you can't really use them with alcohol markers without horrible bleeding and blending problems I still think they're really fun to use and this one was no exception it's incredible dry time made it super fun to use because it was almost like using a ballpoint or a micron pen it was just incredible how fast this ink would dry that meant that with this pose which was more complicated it had more overlapping for shortening perspective I could go in draw the whole piece and not worry about smudges I took my time and I had a blast now it did take too long this illustration took under an hour so really fun to do. Now this ink was great with the dip pen. I didn't need to use my quill nib, but when it came to a brush, that's where this ink was a game changer. I think if an ink is good with a brush, you're going to get more of your money's worth. And oh boy, this was a joy to use. Now I actually use the Creative Marks Artist brush. I use a round three. It's my favorite brush right now that I'm using. And this ink was super fun with that brush. It hugged on tight to the actual brush stills, meaning that I had good amount of use when I got my dips. I had great control. I was even able to freehand a few lines that I noticed I missed during my actual dip pen inking. And I just generally love the entire process of inking with a brush with this ink. It was so much fun. It's ability to dry quick and well, yeah, I did have to touch up an area here and there as you'll see in the video. I'm not going to hold that against the ink as that's just kind of a common thing. If you don't do a good pass, you'll get a few holes here and there. And even inks that I like do that. So that's not a fault of the ink. That's just something that's with the game. But this thing was super fun with the dip pen, but especially with the brush. And I think if you can get a good ink to work your brush, you're really getting your money's worth, especially with this price range. Overall, like I said, this was a quick illustration that I really liked under an hour and while I did think about doing an ink wash I honestly think I'm gonna digitally color this piece at one point so I decided not to and let's go ahead and take a look at it in its finished glory And we're done. Guys, I absolutely love how this piece came out easily in my top 10 favorite pieces. I love how this pose exaggerates more the gorilla aspects of Raph's design, and we still get some of the bat elements with the wings. It just looks really cool. And if you guys like it, it is available on our station account for a $1 digital download. It's the first link in the description down below, and it really does help the channel out. Plus, you get an awesome desktop background. But putting the piece aside, let's talk about the ink itself. I have to say, I actually really do like this ink. I think it's a really good, solid acrylic ink for the price. Now, is this the highest quality acrylic ink I've ever used? No, that honor still goes to the Daily Rolling Acrylic FW ink. That's my favorite acrylic ink I've ever used, and in my opinion, the highest quality one that I have used yet. But this one, for the price and for how much as you get, I really do like it, and I think it's a great ink for beginners because its ability to dry quick really does actually lean itself to beginners and helping with more complex illustrations. It's a good ink to use, and if you can find it Hobby Live for the $6 to $7 price range, definitely worth it. As I have found it on Amazon in between filming, and yeah, this thing sells for $11.99, and that's way too overpriced. $6 to $7.99 is a great deal in my opinion that I can't recommend enough. <laughs> Hey, editing J-Rod here, and I realized that I actually didn't give this thing a proper rating on my scale of 1 to 10. So to fix that, and with everything taken consideration that I mentioned, I'm going to give this an 8 on my scale of 1 to 10. Really does earn that in terms of the price, the quality, and everything you get. So there you go. Go ahead and get back to non-editing J-Rod. <laughs> and we will be revisiting this ink as I have picked up two other versions of it. I picked up the Amsterdam White Ink and the Grey Ink. So I can't wait to give those a test. So the next two videos will be all about this company's ink and seeing what they have to offer. So if you guys want to see that, go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe for more art animation based content let me know what you guys think of the review the ink and my illustration areas you think i could improve on and normal youtube jazz and remember i'm jay right about for our production i draw power in my own soul